All right, this is rocking with Jay, man. It's with Shreetman. How you doing, man? Yeah, really yeah, good. Cheers. Keeping well, man. So congratulations on the upcoming album, Waiting for Good Luck. Yeah, thanks a lot, mate. Um, I'm telling you, it's a classic album in the making. Actually, very good style. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to you. Uh, you guys rock, by the way. You guys are pretty good style. I like how you do classic and new. It's very good style. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm trying, to, trying to keep it real, man. Also, can we just say, I think you must be <laughs> the, the youngest, youngest interviewer. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. <laughs> just started, you know. <laughs> I'm nine, by the way. Nine. Right. God. Jesus, man. <laughs> I, think I feel you, about 500 when, years old when, now. When we last toured America, you wasn't even born. That makes us feel <laughs> so old. <laughs> So this is your second album with Tom and first with Andy. What was it like recording this album? So it was a it was a it was a kind of a weird situation due to COVID, you know. So uh, we wasn't even really planning to do a record like uh, in two in two twenty. Uh, what happened was we had a whole schedule of touring planned, and we played our first show of that that touring schedule in February, and then a week after that. Covid hit like the Pretty UK, big. <laughs> the UK <laughs> massively, so everything got cancelled, and we were stuck in a position like, well, what what do we do now? We don't know what, what like what what's what should we do? Because we were planning to go on tour and we had all these dates in line. We we're going to go to Europe and stuff. So naturally, we started like because we, we, my dad, who's our producer and manager, he owns his own little studio, and fortunately, we we were in a bubble together during the the lockdown. And uh, we started jamming and stuff, and the song started to develop re like really, really well. And uh, we were do we were doing that for about three or four months, and then finally the lockdown eased a little. We managed to go and uh, get a studio time, so we went into the studio and recorded the album. Well, was it different because of the lockdown, or was it kind of new? It was different. Yeah. In, yeah, it was different in the sense where a lot more time for pre-production because it's not because normally there's so many other things that contribute towards like you know with touring and gigs and stuff you never really got a lot of time it's like you're always trying to find the time to do the record but with this record it was different in the sense that we had so much time we almost didn't know what to do with it so we really really nailed in on on the songs and and the writing and getting the band up to scratch where we could perform the songs live in the studio yeah, I think we didn't really have a rule book on this one because we we, um, we had uh, Andy, our new bass player, join, right? Well, Rick kind of left, I think it was early. During early the, in, yeah, during, the, yeah, uh, during the lockdown. So we kind of were left in a situation where the songs we were working on, like we, it was just me, Dan, Teo and Laurie. Um, but having this kind of lockdown was amazing because we actually had the time to really work and do the songs but when it came to the recording obviously you know the normal rule book is you kind of all meet up and you record but it wasn't quite the same for us in that sense um and that probably changed a lot of the dynamics in how this album came about and also for the first time you know recording the album live was something that we had never done before um you know every record we'd done up until this point had always been kind of quite layered um and we knew that something you know, I, you always love every record you do, but I don't think we were kind of matching our sound live. You know, there was always something not missing, but just we hadn't quite captured. And this time with Rockfield coming up, we, you know, we decided we're going to do this live, which was a, a mega change for us. But we had the problem we only have four days in Rockfield because, uh, as you can imagine, there were quite a lot of bands after the first lockdown who wanted to get in there. And um, yeah, it was a make or break moment. And we just, we decided that, look, we're just going to do it. And by the time we actually set up and had everything going, we probably had a couple of hours per song. So it was really, it was a quite a tense, tense studio session, but it was, it was great. It worked out pretty perfectly. Well, that actually was pretty great. You guys were pretty lucky because, you know, this virus was like, you know, it's like, it's kind of like this. Oh, 2020 is going to look like a great year uh to uh covid as a truck hitting him in the yeah. road oh oh look at there a guy in the road 2020 how about we go hit them how about we just yeah. go the year entirely back yeah, exactly like that yeah how about we hit him with a big truck that's good <laughs> it was more than a big truck man it was just like a jumbo jet that was just <laughs> flying along <laughs> and just <laughs> obliterating everything in the path but 
but you know, you sink or swim, man. You know, you, you do you either look at it in a positive way or you look at it in a negative way. And I think it's the music uh, is the only thing that kind of really, you know, kept us going and kept, you know, kept us strong. It really made us realize that what's important in life. The Wrong Way is the new single, correct? The Wrong yeah. Way? Yeah. Yep. That song is pretty cool, by the way. I really like it. Nice uh, job on that one. Well, thanks the so Wrong Way. Oh, wait, what? I'm sorry. Oh, it's just thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Both the Wrong Way and the Rat Race videos were shot in uh, what looks like a big empty concert hall, correct? Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> it was. We, we recorded that at a venue called KK uh, KK Steel Mill. It's it's owned by the uh, guitar player from Judas Priest or the old guitar player KK Downing, and uh, we managed to get the um, the venue uh, to uh, record the, the uh, video in. So it was kind of lucky. Like everything fell into place as we needed it. Yeah, again, it was a, it was saying that was like, you know, a handful of times we met Andy and that was one of them. And um, it was kind of that just getting out of that intense couple of months of being locked in together and going to do that was really, it was like our first kind of live show together in a way. So it was, there was a lot of excitement that day. And uh, yeah, we're just lucky we could make it work because we knew we wanted to get some videos together for for the first two singles and and to be able to, to make it work in, with everything going on, we were, we were lucky in that sense. Uh, was it your first time there with uh, the two new singles or you've been there before doing something? Well, we were actually booked to yeah. play it. Um, oh. so, and sadly, yeah, that that's still on a rescheduled date that will be at some point in the future. But it was, uh, yeah, I guess we kind of played it, just missing a, the few, a, few, a few fans, <laughs> that's all. Yeah, <laughs> just a few fans, that's all. Yeah, and, you know, playing the same song, you know, 400 times in one day. But apart from that, <laughs> it, was, it would have been a dreadful set list yeah. if you'd come to it. <laughs> <laughs> or record an entire concert there for streaming have you or will you be doing that in the future uh we don't know because we've, we've always we're always a bit funny about the kind of online viral gigs because i feel to to experience a band like us you need to be there mm. and it's like there's, a, there's an element of like these kind of online viral gigs it's a bit sterile and it's a bit we, we when we go out with this album we want people to experience it in full That's you know what album, I mean? yeah. and we want it to hear the songs how we want people to hear them so i mean potentially like if covid drags on any longer we might think about it but if there is any chance that we might be able to gig in the next few months of this we're year then option, we're, we're yeah. going to take that option yeah because you know like it just doesn't fit you know like for some big bands like you know, the video just doesn't cut it. You know, sometimes yeah. it just doesn't really cut it for you guys. It's just, it, it I, doesn't cut it at all with rock and roll. I mean, no, rock and roll, it's just it's really, live. It's it's a whole experience that you you go to a gig to get all the energy, to get everything else that comes with it. That's you know wh why we all still yeah. play rock and roll music because it's some of the first gigs we went to. It, it, like recreating that vibe can't always be done online, and I think for us it's it's you know it was a bold decision to take to not do anything like that. But, um, you know, we decided to go down the route of, look, we're going to release music and, you know, we're just going to hold fast. And then when we are ready to go out, you know that you're going to have the treatment 100 percent. Yeah, because everybody just goes there for a good time. It does like the online thing just like doesn't like it's like I'm, yeah. you're supposed to go there for a good time. You're not going to be like. It's yeah. just like you get exactly. it. Yeah, sat by your computer. Yeah. You can't watch a rock and roll show and be at one while you're laying in your bed. I'm yeah. sorry, but it's just the two things just don't mix. It just don't mix at all. No. <laughs> exactly. Was it uh was it weird playing for no one? Was it like was it like this at all? Like I'm gonna go play the song, but then we're the it just was nobody there, so you don't feel the yeah. rhythm. Right? Videos are always really awkward to be fair, because it's like it's not you can't really get into it because like you know i mean you're, you're dampening all the drums so they don't sound or anything and you haven't got any amps plugged in and stuff <laughs> so you're just like my you're just miming in time to the track you know what i mean so it's not like you really just want to like plug in and, and make a load of noise you know what i mean but videos are cool yeah. but like the the finished product is a lot better than than making and what it feels like making i think it's just one of those you know for a brief moment when you're standing on stage and the lights were shining in and you couldn't really see anything you could have pretended it was live, but then all of a sudden you kind of realised that it's not live, man. <laughs> those, uh, those videos were a big difference than uh, the video for Hang 'em High when you yeah. had the people all over you, correct? 
Yeah, that was that was pre COVID. Yeah, that, that was a great time. I mean, yeah. that was filmed in Cambridge actually. It was um, a local club to us, and we just had all of our mates. It was more. It wasn't really a video actually. It was just a kind of giant piss up with our yeah. with our friends really. We just we you know we put it out online and we just we just said look we're filming a video just everyone come and get pissed with us so and we, we invited just, half of Cambridge yeah we just <laughs> bought so much booze and to be honest it was just a daytime session and like by the end I mean I watch it back and I see my guitar being handed over all the you know the, the guys getting to me for the solo and that's a scary moment man because that's one of my babies and I look <laughs> back at it and I go fucking hell I was like no nah. <laughs> like you know but that was that was a great video we enjoyed that one. Do you miss that by any chance? Do you miss it at all? That's like saying, do I miss picking up my guitar? Of course <laughs> I do. Yeah, this, this is what we live for, man. Yeah, like we just can't wait to get back on the road. It's what we live 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 for doing, you know what I mean? And it's it's been so long now, we're just so so like amped up to get out and tour again. Yeah, if you guys tour in America, I might uh take pictures. I'm actually for time. Definitely, definitely. I mean we 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 like America is definitely on on the horizon for us. Like we've we've dreamed about getting back out there. Like when we first first went out there in 2012, like we we went out with Kiss and Motley Crue. Oh, but we've ne- yeah, we did the the tour uh, supported on that. But unfortunately, we've never had the opportunity to get back there. And when we first went out, we we wasn't in a good position with our label. Like our label didn't have a have a, a set up mm-hmm. out in the states, so it was all quite hard for us at that point. But hopefully, with this record and with our label Frontiers, we'll be able to make something work then get back out there soon. They're huge. This the first album for us where they've really they've made a massive kind of um, a massive service in in America for us. And so I think the, you know things are majorly changing, and it's going to be going to be something on the horizon for us to come back to to you know the states. It's such a kind of holy grail for bands in England to get out there. And it's obviously it's not one of those easy things because in England, you know, everything's like half an hour away. You know, you talk to someone in America and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't mind driving four hours to, you know, go to the yeah. local shop. For yeah, us, it's like, like me, if it's 10 minutes down the road, yeah. that's that's an all day job. You know, we've, and, we've had and, friends that have been like, yeah, I'm in Manchester. We should hang out. And it's like, that's like, it's like five hours for us. Yeah, that's... it's like, no, nah, <laughs> you, you just don't do it. So, but to tour America, you know, you need a lot of time and it's it's a it's a big big job and i think if you if you're going to do it you've got to do it properly and but it's something that we really we are going to work on and we will make happen if you guys were in sydney and you guys try to fly to los angeles you might be the next charlie of, of lost if you get <laughs> yeah, yeah literally <laughs> oh, is, it, is it hard by any chance to release new music during a pandemic uh, it's it depends. We're kind of lucky because we've got a great label behind us, and they've been very supportive and help in helping us get this record done. You know what I mean with the promotion and um, like the the build up to it. But I, I, there's a lot of bands that, that ain't been in as fortunate position as us that have really really struggled through this pandemic. Think, so yeah, we're really lucky in a sense as well that so Dan's dad Laurie, he's got a, a production studio here. So we've actually had the opportunity to be able to all work together and still keep music going. But, um, you know, a lot of people have been having to do it online and I can imagine that's that's really hard. But at the same point, I think it's it's separating men from boys and bands who aren't maybe really in it for the music are going to find it hard. And, you know, the people who really are just wanting to put out music are going to make great records and keep keep putting it out and you know there's definitely a, a, a mega buzz in the UK at the moment for new bands and and with the you know not having any international tours going on I think there's going to be a huge you know support for the local bands and and bands that were maybe having you know a, a hard time being recognized that will be recognized now so I think there are some mega positives to take out from this it's just we've got a, another couple of months to go through until anything really happens I see you're booked to play some festivals. Are you excited or nervous? But I can answer that the last part very quickly. A hundred percent excited. <laughs> guys, I know you guys are like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, literally. But yeah. as I said, it's still it's still a bit of a grey area in the UK at the moment because we're under government guidelines. Like, if everyone follows these rules up until July, then they'll get rid of the restrictions. So. 
it's still a bit of a 50 50 chance but we're we're, yeah. we're excited all the same at the moment there's still a ten thousand pound fine for you know if you go and meet up with one of your friends where you're not many so it's, <laughs> it's a little bit hard to kind of break the rules here but i'm i'm sure things are going to get eased and you know we're we're, we're the optimistic kind so we're, we're praying that these festivals go ahead and if they don't they will be reorganized for another point and i think it's just good that you know people have some hope and some belief that music can come back and it is coming back so that's that's the way we look at it dude i'm literally praying for you guys so you guys can we're play. praying for ourselves too man <laughs> I, I actually am playing for you i'm praying i i literally a couple minutes ago i was on my knees praying <laughs> to god to bring Please. back rock and roll man <laughs> do it <laughs> Are you going on a full tour this summer if you can by any chance? Uh, so this so this year we're just doing all the rescheduled shows that we were meant to be playing last year. We don't want to, we because of the situation, we don't want to set in stone a major tour or anything just yet. We'd rather wait until 222 to, to get stuff going again because we'll have more of an idea where we stand with the live live flame yeah. it's situation. Just, you know, it's, already, it's really hard for our fans, you know, being let down once with everything. You know, and then and then we we kind of opened up, and it looked like things were going to be rescheduled, and then again they've been put back. So I think we wanted to leave it later, so we can you know we can give people a concrete date, and everyone can actually make it to these shows. And so yeah, at the moment it's just you know odd odd, odd shows here and there, but the ones we've had come in have been huge for us. You know, we we had a nice little run of he- like festival headliners, and um so and, and so far you know been received amazing kind of amazing news back from everyone i think i think they will go ahead uh well what uh what is the like down where you are at well i know is it is it bad the lockdown in your it has been really bad (laughs) it has been really bad it it depends if you're if you're a gamer i mean it wouldn't be too (laughs) horrific but (laughs) if you're people who i think this this one's been a lot because we've 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 been in two lockdowns now. So we had one at the start of last year, and that was, what, four months? Four, yeah, four, five and months. And then we opened, and then just before Christmas, COVID got really bad again. So we went into another lockdown. We've been in lockdown about four months now. But this, the difference this time is it's in the winter, so the weather is horrible, it's freezing, you can't go out, you can't see anyone. Like, it's it's been a lot harder this, yeah. this time around. And... and because we did the album in the last Yeah, we lockdown. had a record to work towards. We had something to work now, towards, and now we're just literally waiting to get the album released. It's just a bit like, what do we do? You know what I mean? You guys just got me some memories when you said last year about 2020. Do not, yeah. You do not know what memories I went through. Well, <laughs> four months, don't you mean 40 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. But no, literally, I know. It, it, there's something w- was with that year, with the lockdown. It's like, 10 times it was like yeah. 40 years no yeah. 40 months no it's like 40 <laughs> months 40 years definitely <laughs> could be the same man we, we, we feel you we feel you yeah don't worry <laughs> how do you sing without your accent sorry how do you sing without your uh accent i, I mean, think i think yeah. that's just what every uk band like like does like just the British accent sounds or you sound like Austin Powers or something singing with a British accent. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you can't really, because part of the British accent would be quite, you know, we're saying yes. You would never say yes in a song, would you? Yeah. It's always yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's quite weird. But I think, to be honest, you're going to have to talk to Tom on that one. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, me, me and Dad don't really cast ourselves as vocalists. But the, the, problem, <laughs> the problem with Tom is he forgets that he's English in between songs. So he yeah. can't <laughs> talking in an American accent. Well, you guys from LA? It's like, no, from Cambridge. <laughs> uh, so what's next for you guys? You got anything uh, fun coming up? I know the festivals, but anything else from that? Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to keep promoting the record. Um, we potentially might have a third single coming out before the album's released, uh, but we're, we're still in talks with our label over that. Um, but, yeah, we're just going to keep promoting the record, hopefully get out and gig. It's just, just kind of yeah, it's days of press at the moment. We've, we've had such a re- like insane kind of schedule that we've never really had anything like this before, you know, where you have to sit down for afternoons and do press. So it's kind of that for the next couple of weeks. And then, um, yeah, I think pretty much up until the album drops on the 9th of April, and then we'll be getting royally, royally, royally drunk to celebrate that, <laughs> which we, ha- you know, it's, it's been quite weird because we, you know, barely even drunk for the last year. It's, it's just been music, music, music. And then I think we'll, we'll just see what happens after that. It was always kind of, because we all live together, we always get to play, which is really nice. Um, you know, we're always just doing that. And 
hopefully just working towards the lockdowns lifting. And I, I think it's hard for anyone to make plans at the moment because we don't know anything. So we're kind of just bumbling along in life. Tell me your favorite memory from playing the show. Any favorite memory? Well, uh, so favorite memories? What, being on tour? Yeah, being on tour. Yes, get them in there. Get um, dig deep. All right. Dig deep. Dig deep. I think, all right, for me, I'm, the the first time we went to Japan, we did we did Ozfest out there, and just going to a place like that, you know, coming from England and and not really, you know, we've done a lot of traveling, and I've done, you know, we've toured many places since. I mean, I joined the band when I was sixteen, and Dan's been doing this since what you were fourteen, fourteen, you know, and and going to a lot of different places that are amazing. But when we went there, it was just like a whole. It's like being on a different planet. different planet. <laughs> you watch like these sci-fi films, and and you're like kind of in one of them. And the people out there yeah. are just like incredible. The, the culture is just so yeah. different. It was different experience going to like you know just see like the, the different ways restaurants work and bars work. It was just so completely out there, and that yeah. that was that was an awesome time. I think Australia as yeah, well Australia was pretty cool. cool. I think our first ever tour of Alice Cooper as well was was a massive one because that was like a big step like step up for us. Because before that, we'd only ever done like like kind of club gigs and like small supports, and then we went out for I think it was like four, three or four weeks with Alice Cooper across Europe. And was just he gave us a, a set of toilet rolls <laughs> that was quite funny. Took us out for a meal as yeah. well. It was, it was weird hearing cool. like you know because he was being a bit of a rock and roll rebel, and then him saying you know how he how he uh, he kind of when he when he feels like he wants to break the rules or anything, he gets a load of crisps and just stands crushes them on the with floor. his time. Yeah, yeah. And he, you know, that's like the, the kind of the rock and rollness of him. <laughs> but I think yeah, Australia was cool. We we got to meet um Mark Evans from uh the original DC player, uh, bass player. And that was really amazing getting to uh go and see because we we're all huge AC DC fans. We don't normally kind of fanboy over any band, but yeah. getting getting to go around and seeing like Angus and Mal's house um and you know where with you know where a whole lot of rosie was written about obviously the woman rosie and get to see where she lived and some of the early gigs they did there that was pretty mind-blowing because it's you know it's like the holy grail for us uh, um, i think obviously america as well yeah. yeah uh what's your worst did you get beat up by a kangaroo in uh, australia uh no i think... didn't really start on a kangaroo to be honest scary, <laughs> i think the scariest moment we ever had was when we went through the czech republic right so basically it was was on the Alice Cooper tour and we were going, where was we going to? I tell you, no, we were going, I, I can't remember where we were going, but we thought we'd take a shortcut and go through yeah. the border of the Czech Republic. And so we went through the Czech Republic and we're about halfway, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes in, into driving through the Czech Republic. And this van basically stops us. They come up to the car, they've all got guns and they're like, give us your passports. So we asked, we, so they've got guns. Like, what, what, what are we going to do? So we handed our passports over and they drove us about 40 minutes in the wrong direction. And we thought we were going to get murdered or something. We're like, where are they taking us? And they took us to this little like industrial site <laughs> and weighed our van. Well, apparently, did yeah. I mean, I didn't see any scales. So yeah, allegedly we weighed our van and we were overweight, allegedly. But they weighed us when we were all in it with all of our equipment and stuff. And they were like, yeah, you need to pay us 500 euros on the spot now. And we're, and, and, or we're not giving you your passports back. Actually, I, I tell you another pretty bad time. We were driving back through France and I remember we pulled into a garage and this guy come running out. Oh, no, 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 no. And um, we were leaking fuel from our van in a petrol garage. And mate, we we ran pretty fast, and I've never seen a man panic. So <laughs> he was chucking the sand underneath the van. It was yeah, it was, it was pretty bad, mate. We, we've had some pretty wild experiences. Was it like this? Right? Was the guy was like, no, 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 like that guy? Was he like, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. Exactly like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he probably got even more of a fright when he saw all of us bailing out with long hair. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? In, in in the middle of nowhere in France. He, he sounded like he just got his soul sucked out or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. I would have done the same. How do my followers follow you? Huh? My followers. How do they follow you? Your website. Uh, 
I think, mate, I mean, best is, so we've got obviously Instagram, um, we've got Facebook, we've all got our own Facebooks, um, but the best of to check out our music is, mate, hop online, it's all on iTunes, it's on Spotify, to be honest, we're not really a band who really care about having loads of followers and Instagram and all that, we just want people to listen yeah. to our music, um, you know, check out, we've got loads of great videos, um, and you know, if you like the stuff, then come leave us a comment, but Mate, you know, just type in the treatment anywhere and you'll be able to find us. But I think please go check out the new singles, you know, and if you like them, come and listen to the rest. And if you don't, then I probably wouldn't suggest going any further. <laughs> I know uh, you know your Facebook down, right? Because Yeah, we, 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 had, we had this problem. Yeah, this we, we didn't we, know if you kind of knew. It's... So, <laughs> yeah, we got hacked this morning somehow. So we're, in, we're, we're, we're talking to Facebook at the moment to try and get it sorted, but it Someone got into yeah. one of our profiles and ended up messing with the treatment Facebook. So that's actually down at the moment. It's going to be, yeah, I think they said 48 hours, but it should be up. But it's, it's something we've never really kind of had before. I guess, you know, our profiles massively boosted quite recently um, with everything happening with the new album. And uh, we've recently become verified as well. And I, I guess that makes us a little bit of a target. And we're, we're kind of, we're not really that well based with technology so we're kind of learning our way around this at the moment but um yeah we've been we like i said we've had facebook have been in contact with us and uh should be up within 48 hours so leave us a comment after that <laughs> let's hope it's not another dog coy hacker he's not gonna be like yeah support dog coin man support man. well i mean listen man you know screw him if if we can't get it back we'll start, we'll start a new one like you know it's not gonna stop us mate we've had far worse setbacks than a bit of facebook so Worse than that? Wow, you guys are <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Dude, yeah, this is a rock and roll outfit, man. It's not all like you know, <laughs> sex, drugs, and rock and roll, believe it or not, man. It's <laughs> it's uh, surviving, it's of, yeah, it's full of its ups and downs being in the band. That's what, um, you know, that's what makes you who you are. Uh, thank you for being on my show. I hope the next time we talk is at the backstage of one of your shows. Maybe Definitely. I can get a plane to Britain, or you guys are in the UK, yeah, so United yeah, Kingdom, are. maybe I can get in there. Yeah, dude, you need to come check out the UK, man, because when we came to America, it, it blew our minds and everyone who was in America was just saying how they wanted to come to England. And um, it's definitely it's, it's a place you need to come visit. It's a great, great place for rock and roll. Maybe I can try to say hi to you guys or maybe go. Okay, to dude, you can, man. Yeah. You know, we'll have to do this again. This is awesome. Yeah, I would love to do this again in person. You guys seem very nice and very nah, cool. Cheers, dude. Thank you, man. Have a great day, bro. Yeah, all right. Until well, next time, man. Have a good one. Cheers, dear.